Hey guys, Everything Disney Family coming at you. I'm Dave. Hi, I'm Nicole. And we have something really fun and exciting today. Tell them about it, hon. Yes, so today we are going to talk about Disney Genie Plus and individual lightning lanes at Walt Disney World. So we're going to touch bases on everything uh, with Disney Genie Plus and Lightning Lane. If you guys are new here, please consider subscribing, liking this video, checking Instagram out, checking us out here. And where are we going to start today, hon? All right, so there is a lot of information and it is confusing. So I definitely recommend to figure it out before you go. <laughs> you want to kind of have a general idea of what is what um, before you go on your trip so that your trip can be enjoyable because there is so much to enjoy at Disney World and it really can be a great trip if you know what you're doing and know how to use the app. I think that that's something that and I, you I, need to know how to use. I'm not a phone go. or app person at all. So it took me a long time to, to figure it out and I'm still learning, but I think we have all the answers to anyone's questions. And if you guys do have more questions, please put them down in the comments below because we'd love to answer them. And if we don't have an answer, we will find you an answer. Yes. So, so all this information that we're gonna go over today is also on our Instagram stories today. And then I also saved it in a highlight. Um, I can show you. So the highlight is on the in, it's on Instagram and yep. it will be found right under the main picture. So here's our main page, our Instagram page. So right here, ooh, don't look at my nails. <laughs> um, right there it says Genie Plus. And so if you go there, you can see everything mm -hmm. that we're going to talk about. And then also like here is a list of all of the rides that are available for Genie Plus at Magic Kingdom. And I go through each park with all of the available And if you guys are going through the rides. stories and you want to sit there and read an individual story and it's going oh, by too fast, yeah. just hold you can your, hold it and just, it save. Or it doesn't save, it's just stop so you can read it. So you have plenty of time to sit there. So just like pinch your screen or hold your finger down on that sto individual story yep. and you'll have plenty of time to look over it. So Disney Genie Plus is totally different than the Fast Passes, which most people, which including myself, was used to before um, Disney uh, released Disney Genie Plus. So Fast Passes used to be free. You used to book them before your trip. You could book them, what, 60 days out if you were a resort out. guest and 30 days out for non-resort guests. And you could book three of them at a time. Yes. So that is no more. You no longer book your Fast Passes early. You book them the day of. And you have to pay for them. <laughs> Yeah, so it is, it is a nice feature because you're not having to pre-plan your whole day, 60 days in advance. I mean, you still kind of have to do that with dining, mm -hmm. but that's a, that's a different story for a different day. <laughs> and so Disney Genie Plus becomes available to anybody who purchases it, and it's $15 per person per day per park. Plus so, tax. So really, yeah. it's like $16 per person per day, about a little less than 16 So if you guys are going to go and you have a family of four, you're going to be at Magic Kingdom and you want to purchase it, it's going to be $60 and then tax on top of that for your whole day. But with included in that price of that Disney Plus, or the Disney Genie, Genie Plus, Plus <laughs> I, Disney Plus, Genie Plus, so there's a lot pluses. of pluses, <laughs> yes. Um, you're going to have access to skip a lot of lines that you would normally have to wait in. So if this is going to be, you know, a once a year or once in a lifetime or, you know, if you guys are looking to get a lot done, it's something you may want to consider paying the money. Yeah, it does suck, but you're already paying so much money to go into the parks. You're paying for the for the resorts, for the restaurants, transportation now from souvenirs. the airport, souvenirs. I mean, what's another $15 it per It really person? depends on yeah. your party size. For us, we're a family of three, so... On our last trip, we did purchase it for all of our park days. And I think it was definitely beneficial at Magic Kingdom and maybe not as beneficial at Epcot and Animal Kingdom for us, just the way that we did it on those days. We also had a lot of other, like we had the Christmas party in the evening on our Epcot day, so we didn't, we weren't at Epcot for that long. Yeah. So when you purchase Disney Genie Plus, um, you do that off the app, from the Disney World app. And you'll you'll pre-select everybody that's in your party. Uh, you'll make the advance purchase in advance, so the morning of that you're going to the park. Let's or just, you can purchase it the day of. Yeah. 
And there's a totally different thing from Disney Genie Plus and Lightning. They're different things, but they're kind of intertwined together within the same app. So we're going to dive into Lightning and Lane in just a little bit yep. as far as the Disney Genie Plus is available to anybody who stays on resort. Is it as well for off-site guests at 7 yeah. o'clock? Okay, so this is where the difference between Genie Plus and individual Lightning Lanes okay. are. So genie plus is available to everybody at 7 a.m and i highly highly recommend that at 7 a.m you guys set your alarm if you're not a morning person i highly recommend still waking up at 7 a.m and getting that first selection because there's certain rides that might not be available later so there's By different priorities that you want to get right at 7 a.m and also in that list that we have posted over on instagram it it tells you what we think is the best, you know, top priority. We priorities. put little priority, little... For Magic Kingdom, at least, I put in order what you should get. So our highest priority was Jungle Cruise because that one goes very quickly and it can get to be a very long wait. So that's what I suggest is that you want to get at 7 a.m. for Magic Kingdom. Yeah, and it's not a very high turnover for Jungle Cruise. So the day that we happened to go, we got that right at 7 a.m. And um, I believe by 8.30, 8.45 that day, their whole Disney Genie Plus for the whole day was already gone, completely right. gone. So I would on our day we rode Jungle Cruise at ten a.m. So and that's with our with the um, that's selecting right at seven o'clock in the morning. Right, but you could select at seven o'clock and get a four p.m. Like you know, it just depends on how quickly it's going. But remember that the Disney Genie Plus is not mandatory. You could still go to the attraction right. and wait in the queue. Yeah. The queue may be, you know, 90 yeah, minutes. so it's going to depend on the time of the year that you're going. Are you going during spring break or during the summer? But honestly, like right now it's January and the parks are, are really crowded. So I'm going to look right now and just see what the wait times are. So right now, um, so it is Saturday. It's a Saturday in January um, around 4 p.m. And Jungle Cruise has a 50 minute wait. So not, not, not terrible. I mean, that's actually one of the lighter times I've seen in a long time. Maybe now that the holidays are well past as we're nearing it's, February. It's still been pretty busy what I've seen in the parks. But anyways, so let's say, like for us, we rode one, two, three, four, five. At Magic Kingdom, we rode five rides with Genie Plus. So even if they were half out, like if we skipped, but some of these we definitely skipped an hour wait. Yep, for so, sure. I don't know. Let's say we save three or four hours in line, yeah. I think. That'll I give think you that's safe to say. That'll give you that much more time to so do more So you have to think about is saving three to four hours in time, is that worth for us um, $45. $45. That I guess that's the way that you really need to think about it. But then it's a totally different situation when Lightning Lane comes in because then... So, individual lightning lane is yeah. what we're going to call it because you go into the lightning lane queue for the genie plus rides so that's what also makes it confusing so so can we simplify this for them just a little bit anybody yes. who is really really confused <laughs> so you have you have your disney app so that's at the top right that's your main source for everything inside of disney and think about this as like a family tree, okay? Because that's what, the, and then everything's branching off from the middle, okay? So Disney, the main app is the main thing. And underneath it, you're going to have Disney Genie Plus. That's there. And then branched off from that is individual lightning lanes per ride. Well, can, I would say that they're completely separate because you can have one without the other and you can buy both. You do not have to have Genie Plus to have an individual lightning lane. Okay. So that is, so you can separate. So we're at Walt Disney World app up here, and then we are separating completely to the two different okay. aspects. So that's fair. So we haven't talked much about individual lightning lanes. So these are, we will call the most popular rides at each park. So and these are a, a kind of like a pay to play, you could say, kind of. So you passes, have to pay right? per ride. And, and it's a different price every day, depending on what day of the week it is, and also depending on what's what season it is. Again, spring break is going to have a higher price. Summer is going to have a higher price. So these rides you pay, it's um, $7 per person to $15 per person. Yep. And it, that varies. So let's just say it's $10 per person on average um, to ride these rides. So for some people, this might be worth it also. On our last trip, we did use this for Remy's Ratatouille Adventure. Um, it was just, we knew we wanted to ride it. We didn't want to wait in the line and we we were going to Epcot just like in the morning and afternoon so we didn't want 
to have to wait. We didn't have that much time at Epcot, so we were like, all right, let's just pay it. I don't yeah. remember what we paid. Yeah, $15 per It was $15 per person. per person. Okay. Yeah, and I think tax was put on that as it ended up being like fifteen right. ninety six. Right. So it, just for one attraction. and But we beat the line. We beat the queue for that one. And it was a walk right on. We scanned our um, individual lightning lanes for that ride. So it ended up costing us $47 and some change for the three of us. Mm -hmm. But as soon as we scanned our... What are magic bands? Which are a totally different thing. That's not another <laughs> tree. A totally different subject. Or you can use your phones too. You your don't phones. have to have a magic band. If you buy them in the morning. But we bought Remy's that morning. And I remember... Um, the Disney app was a little funky that morning, and it wasn't working. Glitchy. It was glitchy, and they were running a little bit later than what they were supposed to release at 7. I think we got them at, like, 7.20, but that was the whole app. Anyways, regardless, by 8 a.m., I checked again. Every individual lightning lane for the whole day, and remember, this was Christmas time, was gone for every single attraction for every park. So let's also mention, we talked about how Genie Plus... Anybody, whether you're an on-site or off-site guest, can book at 7 a.m. Now, individual lightning lanes are different. For those, to book at 7 a.m., you have to be a Disney Resort guest. All off-site resort guests, they cannot book an individual lightning lane until the park opens. So, like Dave said, I'm, just, I'm assuming that Magic Kingdom probably opened at 8 a.m. that yeah. day. At that point, what time did you say you checked? It was 8 o'clock. Yeah. They were all gone. So, so, so that is an advantage train. of staying at Dis a Disney resort. Is that you can, if you want to book an individual lightning lane, you can do that right at 7 a.m. And if anybody has any questions on resorts or our suggestions on resorts, send us a, send us a message and we'll, we'll get to you. And remember at Disney resorts too, there's, there's three different price levels. They have deluxe, moderate, and value resorts. So you could, you could stay at a, a value resort and they are reasonably priced. And you don't have to break the bank to stay at a Disney World Resort and get those extra perks that are right. included. Those extra perks are paying to go on a ride, an extra on yeah. top of your ticket price. But I mean... Think about it. How often do you do this? How often do you take a trip? How often, you know, so you, you have to, I mean, every person's different. You have to weigh all your options. So, I mean. so let's go over what, um, which, what are the individual lightning lanes? So at Magic Kingdom, there's Seven Dwarfs Mine Train and Space Mountain. And there's I, two per park, right? Yeah. Okay. Uh, well, yeah. Animal Kingdom, we'll get to that one of them is closed right now. So if you can rope drop Seven Dwarfs Mine Train, then don't pay for a lightning lane. Like if you're able, if you're a resort guest and you can get in that half hour early and you can go right to Seven Dwarfs Mine if Train. If you're an early bird perfect. like we are, get to the parks at 6.37 in the morning, you won't have to pay the extra cost. You could rope drop that ride, be off that ride before the park even opens and still do other attractions. Right, but if you would rather sleep in, then pay the 10 bucks. Still to have to set your alarm. <laughs> To get your lightning lane. True, light. you do need to be awake at 7 to get the lightning lane, but then you could go back to sleep if you wanted. So anyways, those are the two rides at Magic Kingdom. At Hollywood Studios, you have Rise of the Resistance and Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Railway. Honestly, I think that I would it would you be tell beneficial you. to use it for either of those. Like, I think that that those are if you know, you long do, waits. Can you do two lightning lanes? You can do two per day. So if you're park hopping, so if you, you could not do, do more than two. So if you're in Hollywood Studios and you wanted to purchase a lightning lane for both yep. Rise and you could do both attractions. Yep. So right now, Rise of the Resistance, again, this is a Saturday in January. Um, Rise of the Resistance is a 140 minute wait. So is you it could worth? Wait. You could queue it. Is it worth 10, 15 bucks? To skip the 140 Possibly, yes. away. <laughs> Rise of the Resistance is a great ride. If you haven't been on it, you have to go on it. Even if you don't like Star Wars, it is like just the way that Disney has made these rides lately. So cool. Personally, I love Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Railway. I think that is my favorite Walt Disney World ride of all of the parks. My suggestion, if you guys are doing a Hollywood Studios Day, rope drop Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Railway. Right when you get to the park, before everybody gets to the park, then you don't need to pay the extra cost to get on it. You'll be off of it super early. Purchase the Star Wars. Hit that later in the afternoon and then hit Toy Story Land and knock out any big stuff before yep. the crowds hit the park. So right now, Mickey and Minnie's is a 55-minute wait, which is interesting because uh, Slinky Dog is 80 minutes. and a Slinky Dog will always be really long. 
and oh well, Toy Story Midway Mania is 60 minutes and Smuggler's Run is 60 minutes. So there are some big wait times at Hollywood Studios right now. 55 minutes for... And you, have, you haven't even factored in. Rock and Roller Those weights are probably too. skewed a little bit because everything is very cold right now. Like they had frost warning last night. Oh, so you think that not as many people are yeah, going to go? Yeah, so I think okay. those, wait, those wait times are probably going to be yeah. a little lower than what they normally would be. So again, Hollywood Studios is a park that we would also recommend the Genie Plus. I know we're kind of going off on that. I know we're talking about individual lightning lanes, but I would recommend purchasing the Genie Plus to use at Hollywood Studios, to use on Millennium Falcon, Smuggler's Run, Slinky Dog Dash, and Tower of Terror. If you can just do those three rides... That's saving you a huge. That's saving you three hours for the fifteen dollar purchase. I don't know. I think it's worth it. Um, okay, moving on to Epcot. The two individual Lightning Lane rides there are Frozen Ever After and Remy's Ratatouille Adventure. Of course, Remy's is a brand new ride. It's Super very popular. fun. We we did it. You know we we enjoyed it. So Frozen Ever After, we did that at Rope Drop when we. We were there for the early entrance because we were our resort guest. Yep. When we were getting off of Frozen Ever After, the line was already 70 minutes. 75 minutes long. When we walked that in. Was at open, that was before the park was even open to regular resort guests. 75 minute wait for Frozen Ever After. So, yeah, this what? is, this is, yeah. We I took wrote, a picture of the line. I was or in video. I'm like, what are these people doing? That so the seems park like opened a huge at, waste of at time. At 10, we got there at 9.15. We were one of the first ones. We actually, me and Lauren and Nicole were the first ones to scan in for the day. So we got right up to the front till where they put the rope. We were there and we went straight to Frozen. Not one single person. We walked on. It said five minutes. We walked into the thing. We came out. It said 70. So and that's in, in the time, be, it took I us mean, for a, a four-minute ride. So it we'll bumped. say 10 minutes to walk the queue and ride the ride. 75 minute wait. Okay, so anyways, that's a whole nother. Is it worth it? Maybe. I don't know. Or you got to get there early. Okay, over at Animal Kingdom, the two individual Lightning Lane attractions there are Avatar Flight of Passage and then Expedition Everest. Um, Everest is currently closed until April of 2022 doing some refurbishments. Um, Flight of Passage, an amazing, amazing ride. Again, if you haven't been on it, it has been open for many years now, so maybe you have been on it. 2017, but, was it? Um, maybe it's worth it. I don't know. <laughs> it Again, just, it's it just personal depends preference, on how right? you're going to do your day. If you can get there for rope drop and you can get one of these big rides out of the way first, great. Then you don't have to pay for it. If you can't make it for rope drop, maybe you want to pay. And it just depends on what's in your budget, how big your family is, how much you want to spend. There's like no right or wrong answer with Genie no. Plus and individual Lightning Lane. And there's a lot to digest and to unpack so with much. Lightning Lane and Disney Plus and the app. And then I know still people still refer to them as Fast Pass, which is not even I a thing I think we need anymore. to touch on this whole two hour thing. One more important thing about Genie Plus, and this is for about Genie Plus, not the individual Lightning Lane, is that when you book a fast pa or when you book a genie plus it might you might not book it until like let's say our 7 a.m at 7 a.m we book an individual no at 7 a.m we book a genie plus for jungle ride, cruise for jungle cruise but we can't get on it until three o'clock we can book the next fast pass oh my gosh that, genie plus we can book the next see? genie plus pass at two hours after the park opens so at magic kingdom opens at Eight o'clock. What I don't know what yeah. time it opened when yeah. we were there. If it opens at eight o'clock, that means at ten a.m. we can make our next selection. Set alarms on your phone. You guys don't want to see what my alarms look like on my phone because there's so many. Um, set an alarm to remind yourself. Oh, we got to book another for Genie on, Plus. Yeah, for two hours out, set an alarm so you make sure you had that reminder there. Now, let's say at ten o'clock, right away at ten o'clock, you book your next. Um, Genie Plus, and you book it for 6 o'clock tonight. Okay, so it's 10 o'clock, so that means at noon, we want it to be right on there again at noon and booking our next one. Now, let's say at noon, we book something that's at 12.30. Winnie right? the Pooh, yeah. So at 12.30, we go ride Winnie the Pooh. We scan our Magic Band. Some rides, you might have to scan your Magic Band twice, so you watch for that. But once you scan in that first or second time, then you're on your phone again and you're booking... Once you use that pass then you could 
get another one right so you're away. on a fo your phone a lot too so another recommendation is definitely bring a backup charger because you're taking pictures you're on the app i i don't like it i don't like that you have to be on the app on your phone i would rather be in the moment but this is what we got to do so you got to have a backup charger i'm going to challenge you to do an in the moment day at a disney park no electronics can you do it I can't take any pictures? Nope. What about, what if we have photo pass? No Can mobile have... order, no photo Ooh, pass. That would be really hard. But I could do photo pass and just, I because the photo pass you can get on a card. Okay. So you could do it. Oh. You okay. think, you're thinking you could do it? If I can still have photo pass people take my pictures. No fast passes, no mobile ordering. No. That would be rough. No. No uh, mobile ordering. No uh, thing on your arm. Magic band. Yep. Yeah. Um, okay, well, I think I think that we we covered most of the tips. And there's still a lot that we didn't touch. <laughs> um, my final tip is to have fun. You're at Disney World, and it's going to be amazing. No if you guys made it this do. far, you guys are amazing for watching us this long talk ramble on about all this fun stuff. But we have a lot of fun stuff planned in the future. Yes. So um, we have a really big announcement tomorrow that we can't wait to share with all of you. Yes which may be months ago if you're just not watching this. That's true. So, um, well, that's it, everybody. Thank you so much for watching us. And leave us some comments down below. We'd love to answer them or ask us questions on Instagram or here or anywhere. If you see us in the park, stop us. Give us a hug. Say hi. I don't know if I want a hug during COVID. I don't I'll know. take hugs. Okay. I love them. Everybody gets a hug. <laughs> everybody gets a hug, even Mickey. I wish I could give Mickey a hug. Well, guys, may you have a safe day. Enjoy your day in the parks. And we're Everything Disney family. And we'll talk to you guys later. Bye.